a second session of mechatronics in the CCD Congress. So uh, we are going to uh, listen to the presentation of the work entitled uh, Measuring Hardness System Based on IMAGE Processing that is going to be presented by Mr. Jose Manuel Ramirez Puente. Uh, we will uh, have uh, up to uh, 17 minutes for uh, the presentation, and then uh, we will reserve about three minutes for questions. So, uh, Mr. Manuel, uh, you may begin. Okay. Hi, good morning. My name is Jose Manuel Ramirez Puente from UPIX of the Instituto Politecnico Nacional. And I'm going to present the prototype of harness measurement system based on imaging processing. Uh, the content of this presentation includes an introduction to the definition of harness, the modification, modification made for the prototype, the operating process, as well the result and conclusion and future work. The harness measurement. The harness uh, of a material indicates uh, its resistance to scratching and penetration. To determine this property, there are static indentation methods, which consist of applying a standardized force for a certain amount of time on a previously prepared and impurity-free the test material. This work is based on the Brinner Harness method, which uses a spherical indenter and the indentation mark on the material is measurement through optical measurement. The optical measurement involves measuring the diameter of the indentation and evaluating the resultant using the Brinell hardness equation. To obtain the hardness value, this process depends on the user skills, which can lead to focusing and measurement errors. For this work, a camera and automatic image analysis are used to reduce these errors. The, uh, a commercial microscope with a digital camera was used and modifications were made to control it via an Arduino Uno microcontroller. The purpose was to automatic vertical movement and the control displacement through limited switch. The operation consists of descending the microscope to the starting position, autofocus, and measure the diameter of the indentation. For this, a user interface was implemented in MATLAB. In composition, MATLAB y an Arduino, a communication via USB. When MATLAB send the command home OK, Arduino moves the microscope to the starting position, which is targeted when the upper limit switch is pressed. Arduino then respond with the home OK command, indicating that device is ready, begin automatic focusing. 
The autofocus is based on a gradient edge detection algorithm, which is an iterative process. It involves capturing an image, converting into grayscale, applying a detection, and evaluating the maximum gradient value. The detection by gradient can be calculated using the first order derivative, applying equation one in the both the x and y direction. The gradient magnitude can then be calculated using equation two. The autofocus moving start when the MATLAB send the command down. Arduino then activates the motor for 10 steps and respond when the down OK command. In MATLAB, equation four is applicated and the maximum gradient value is stored in the a vector. The maximum values obtained uh, are continually evaluated in MATLAB and when a value is higher than the previously one, is detected, MATLAB sends the back command to that Arduino. Arduino moves the microscope back uh, to the previous position. This indicates that the previous image is the sharpest and the, that the autofocus has been successfully achieved. The graph shows uh, the maximum gradient values. In the last move, it, a decrease in the gradient values was detected, uh, prompting the system to return the previous position. The figure A corresponds to the, the focused image and the its respective edge. The figure C corresponds to the focus of the match and to respective edge. In indentation measurement uh, is by applying the whole, the hue transform for circles. The diameter uh, of the indentation is calculated in pixels to achieve better uh, result and eliminate noise in the image. A Gaussian filter is applied in MATLAB. The circular hole transform. A detection is applied. Uh, for each edge point, a circle with the desired radius is generated, generated using equation five. And this is stored in a matrix uh, called the accumulator. The highest values can be easily identified and these points will indicate where the center of the circle is located. Finally, uh, the information about the circles and their radius is drawn in blue in the image original.
Uh, the calibration uh, between the physical dimension of the indentation and the radius measurement in pixel uh, was carried out um, using a calibration standard uh, on of one hundred thirty one HV. Was which uh, has a measurement, measurement uh, of the one point three millimeters the diameter. Uh, the diameter in pixel is five hundred ten pixels. So each pixel corresponds to two point five four nine millimeters. So verify repetibility, the indentation is measurement uh, then times. The standard expression uh, for the center coordinates coordinates and the four radius are calculated. Uh, Consequently, uh, the physical error is the 1.44 mm -hmm. uh, micrometers, mm -hmm. uh, which is equivalent to plus or minus 0.4 HV. Mm -hmm. uh, ejecution times. Uh, the total time for the system is uh, 1.5 minutes. In the manual process with the analog equipment uh, takes more than 10 minutes. Uh, testing time is reduced. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the prototype designing from a um, commercial microscope uh, utilizing communication between MATLAB and Arduino, perform automatic focusing and measurement the diameter of the indentation with precision and repetibility. As future work, it is proposed to implement more complex algorithms to reduce time, uh, study robust uh, methods for measuring the diameter of the indentation, and include analysis for bigger harness measurement. Uh, uh, I am finished and thank you you so much. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have time for questions. Please. If someone online would like to ask a question, you can send the question to us and we will uh, ask the question in your stead. So, uh, is there any question? Okay. Well, I have a question. Um, when you are measuring uh, this uh, hardness, uh, coefficient of Brinell, uh, you have two Bs in one of the formulas. What is uh, what is the difference between them? I mean, uh, uh, capital D is uh, the total diameter. That's right? Mm.
Yes, is the total diameter? Okay, and um, the the other D, the small D, the one that is not the capital D. Because in a for formula you have uh, two kinds of this capital D and uh, small D. Is the D minuscule? Yes. Yes. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, the D. Um, uh, in, in the question is. Uh, the is uh, the diameter in the indented indented indentador and the minuscule is the uh, diameter the indentation okay so uh, the blue circle that we can see in the image is uh -huh. uh, that uh, little d They see much? Yes. Oh, okay. And in this image, uh, these dates uh, are, are used. Uh, the indentation for this material is the 1.3 millimeters. Okay. And uh, capital D is the uh, diameter for the uh, tool. The, the in the, the uh, you call it the indentator. Okay, is uh, mm, it's um, uh, a spheric uh, Wolfram. The material you see, uh, indented, indented, indentador, uh, the wall frame. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay uh, thank you very much for your uh, answer. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to ask a question? You're welcome. Well, uh, then uh, we give you the thanks, uh, Mr. Jose Manuel. Thank you for your pre presentation. Oh, thank you. Uh, the next presentation is uh, the presentation of the work entitled A Convolutional Neural Network Based Parametric Identification for the Dynamic Model of a Cartesian Robot in a, a FPGA Framework. 
And uh, the speaker is uh, Ms. Michelle Guerra Marin. So we uh, ask uh, to Ms. Michelle uh, if she can uh, share the presentation, uh, if she can share uh, the screen so that we can see the presentation. Can you hear us? Okay. Can you please share your screen so that we can see you? Uh, presentation and uh, if you be so kind as to uh, turn on your cam please hello good morning can you hear me yeah. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, you need one second. Hello, good morning. My name is Michel Garamari. Today I will talk about the design of a convolutional neural network for the parametric identification of a Cartesian robot uh, with three degrees of freedoms. Okay, let's, let's start with parametric identification. It helps robots work better by finding key parameters. This paper presents a convolutional neural network that identifies important parameters of a Cartesian robot. It explains how the model was built and trained. The results show the Convolutional neural network match about 85% of the test data. Okay, continue. Uh, what is a convolutional neural network? They are a type of IA that helps computers understand images. They analyze small parts on an image of to find patterns like shapes or edge. Convolutional neural network are mainly used for searching tasks. What is a parametric identification? This is a method to find k parameters in a system model. The, there exist com two common techniques are least squares, which minimizes the difference between predicts and actual da data, and common filter, which estimate the parameters over time, reducing error. This method helps improve the system performance. Okay, let's uh, in this figure we see the robot using in our research. It has a motor with a shaft, a gearbox, a coupling, and value script, a node, and the work table. This is a three degree of freedom Cartesian robot. Okay, we present the following table, which show all the system parameters based on the mechanical parts shown in this diagram. Okay, now we can see the dyna dynamic model of the for the Cartesian robot. This system was created with the Lumpet parameters method and the Euler-Lagrange equation. In this image, we can see the proposed structure of for a convolutional neural network for parametric identification of a Cartesian robot. It has two convolutional layers and two fully connected layers. Once the once convolutional network 
neural network is defined, the first task is generate the image from the robot's numerical data. This is done using two functions, alpha and c, which are essential vectors. When these vectors are uh, matched together, they create a matrix or image. Now, in this, uh, in this, we can see these are the two functions and different in the following system. The, the idea is that at some point, the first part of the C equation will match point with the second part. This will make an alpha and C equal, creating an image that show the torque signal quarter. The training method chosen for the neural network is bad propagation because it helps us to find the parametric residual in image usage. But propagation finds the error between the predicate output and the real result, then it adjusts the weight and in the network to make the error smaller. Okay, the following images show the method for identify the system parameters using the values from the training neural network. For this research, we decided to identify the following four parameters that are motor inertia, motor rigidity, rigidity adaptation parameter, and motor shaft friction, as these are associated with, with the motor and the shaft. Starting with the results of this work, we first present a couple of exam images, creating using the methodology on use for the training of the CNN, convolutional neural network. The graph shows how the loss decreased during training, the blue line and red line, but lower which means the convolutional network network is learning, but the, real, the red line has a small random ups and downs. They say because the, the network adjusts the weights and neurons many times to improve. Using the parametric, parametric identification algorithm with the training convolutional neural network, we get the following numerical values for the degrees of freedom. Now we can see the, the, these images. The images show how the neural network recreate the uh, signal torque of the X, Y, Z axis of the robot. It compares them to the real signal. The, cur the curves are similar, meaning the neural networks works well. But these are, there are small differences, especially of the peaks. Okay, the, we continue. The, the, this works to the three degree of freedom Cartesian robot, a create a neural network for a parametric identification. Using signal as images to train the network was effective, reaching about 8, 85% match with the re, uh, real result. Now we can see the reference uses in this work. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mitchell. Is there anyone uh, who would like to ask a question? If you are online, you can send us your question and we will kindly ask a question for you. Okay, uh, Mr. Michel, uh, yes. the, the parameters of the robot that uh, you are identifying in order to, to achieve that uh, identification using a convolutional neural networks, uh, if I understood correctly, you have to form uh, a matrix. Yes. Okay, and, and those, uh, the data used to create that matrix, uh, where do you get it? You, do you propose it uh, in the first iteration or, or uh, you have some, uh, I don't know, some kind of idea at the beginning, you, you need to, to have previous knowledge of the of the system or uh, you can use propose any any value 
Okay, yeah. The idea is to create images. I'm going to start the presentation again. Just in this part. Uh, okay. Uh, give me one second. Um, okay, yeah, this is this part. Okay, the idea is to create images with the with the robot signals. That means, for example, in this uh, equation, C, as you can see, we have two plus with the, for the torque. The idea is when, and in some point, the signal of this part of the two torque uh, is going to be equal to the second part. You got it? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Old. Yeah. Okay. These two functions are definite in this in this system in equation. The idea is that at some point, I see, I say, uh, the first part of the C function will match with the second part. This part. I I don't know if you can see this part, uh, which are essentially vector. These these two functions. When these vectors are uh, are matched together, we are create a matrix or an image because we have a uh, one vector plus well, um, uh, yeah, plus uh, another vector. That means we have the torque, uh, yeah, the signal torque square. Mm -hmm. That that's the result. Because ah, I'm sorry. Uh, God, this, what did I oh, no. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the result. We have two different images when the two signals are matched, uh, whereas when the, these two signals are different. In this image, we can see two examples of dyna dynamic parameters, the, but are this different, and these two are uh, equal. Okay. So uh, when they are equal, you. Uh, know that you have uh, su successfully identified the parameters. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. OK. Uh, yeah, that, the idea that they're, they are equal is uh, to help the convolutional neural networks to identify these, these parameter residual in between the two signals, C and alpha. Yeah, because in, this, in the last part of the equation, you have uh, some sort of model. Uh, yeah, that's correct. OK. Well, uh, is there uh, any, any question? <laughs> or question? Well, um, thank you very much, Mr. Michel. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for your contribution. Um, so uh, let's, and we have some means to spare our the next okay. presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's presentation will be Okay. So, big five minutes. <laughs>
Okay. <clears throat> let's continue. Uh, let's continue with the next presentation. And uh, the next talk uh, is entitled uh, Design and Implementation of Approved for 3D Scanning with FPGA Based Architecture. Uh, the speaker is going to be uh, Mr. Juan Francisco Pintor. Uh, so uh, uh, I ask uh, Mr. Juan Francisco to share the presentation. We can see it. Uh, and of course, uh, to keep uh, his camera uh, on. So uh, Mr. Juan Francisco, whenever you're ready, you may begin. Hi, hi. I turn my. You see the presentation? Yeah, we can hear you. Ah, okay. It's everything. Everything is fine. Good. Um, good morning. I'm Juan Francisco Pintor Michimani. I am affiliated with the Benemérito Universidad Autónoma de Puebla. And it's a pleasure to stay here with us. And today I will be presenting design and implementation of a pro for 3D scanning with FPGA based architecture. Mm. Okay. This work presents the design of a high precision proof specifically developed for installation of 3D grid freedom practice and CNC rock. The proof is injected to perform high resolution scanning of, of various parts to analyze the behavior of mechanisms and dynamic model of the robot is introduced. Utilize design the Lumpet parameters methodology and formulate through the Euler Lagrange equation. Based on this analysis of control for the robot, was developed employing an embedded scientist implement on Altera Cyclone 5 FPGA. This system enables precise control for each motor's position, ensuring the, um, the accuracy required for advanced scanning tasks. Over the years, humans have sought to create machines that assist with every task. Machines that particularly um, create for industrial sector. This pursuit led to the develop of, for the first CNC machine in 1952, which were designed to manufacture parts for in industrial settings and automated machine process. In the figure one, we can observe the first CNC machine ever created. Will figure thus shows the first milling machine used to drilling plates. Over time, CNC machines have involved, become capable in increasing complex tasks and achieve extremely high precision in their moves. This 3D grade of freedom CNC machines began incorporating different tools, such as laser, cut of set axis, and in this case, tools that can perform 3D scanning, which may be either contacts based or not contacts. In this particular case, we will focus on contact probes. The primary operation involves placing the tool on the Z axis, moving across the X and Y axis, and using the probe to scan the surface of the part. As the probe moves, it records the X, Y, and Z coordinates, which are then processed to generate the scanned 3D model. Various companies uh, manufacture this type of machine achieve resolution on the order of microns for each moment. Due to the high precision, these machines are typical, very expensive, and the primary focus um, in their design is achieve exact movements. These types of machines are called coordinate measurement machines. The purpose of this work is to present the design and develop of a pro for three grades of freedom Cartesian robots, function at CNC machines. The key parts are follows. The system is driven by embedded FPGAs counting 32 bit microprocessor, a modified PD controller incorporating the hyperbolic tangent function is employed to control the robot movements. And the primary objective is develop a coordinate measurement machines that can also operate a 3D scanner. <clears throat> An important step is starting the scanning process is understanding the dynamic model. The model is highly useful 
for conduct tech simulation and analyze how the system begins with control algorithm. To obtain the model, the LUMPET parameter was employed. This method involves modeling each modeling each um, mechanical component along the axis. For example, uh, in this model, we can see the motor, um, the valve screw, the nut, which axis being construct the same form. To the LUMPET model, we utilize the other Lagrange equation, which involves the, Lagra the Lagrangian incorporating kinetic energy, potential energy, dissipative energies, and virtual work. Thus, we calculate the kinetic energy and all the energies. We apply the Lagrange equation and derivate the dynamic model for the CNC robot. Finally, we obtain six differential equations that describe the behavior of the robot. These six equations are the same for all the three axes of the robot, differing only in the values of the parameters. In this table, we show the parameters and the robot. These values were previously calculated using the last square method on artificial, artificial intelligence, which has been the focus of the work in order to obtain a robust model to present the robot and the proof tool. As previously uh, uh, mentioned, the proof tool can be either contact-based or not contact. In this work, the contact-based type was chosen. These tools vary vary in size and rigidity, but the company brand they are composed of similar components. This includes the body, which hosts internal mechanisms such as springs that return the tool to the original position, a stem for movement. A linear bearings to enable frictional motions. Oh, sorry. Mm, with that, all these elements, it's possible to create a design to prof. Uh, I've designed the prof on software and show the modeling design. The circuit uh, only mechanical system is not functional, but I did need. Um, electronic part and because I chose a trigger a proof is based on a secret timer because it's necessary to send a pulse to FPGA to save the coordinates. This is with this circuit was configured in monostyle mode and to ensure that were not issues and combination logic component was implemented in this part. This ensures that when the proof makes contact, the zero axis PWM is also considered turning off when the probe touches to prevent any accidents. To control each robot's access, an alter FPGA from the Cyclone 5 family was used. Within this FPGA, a 32-bit microprocessor was programmed, responsible for processing all data to close the control loop. For example, it has encoded readings, the limit switch, and generates PWM signals. Throw state machines are programmed using Altera H HDL language. The FPGA calculates the velocity and acceleration and obtain each variable in real time, such as position and the speed. A WEFI model is used to transmit all the information continuously. Mm, the robot control system utilizes a um, modified PD control with hyperbolic tangent function. This function um, helps to actuate saturation and protects the system from excessive commands. This is the diagram of the PD control loop. And in the figure eight, we can see how the control loop is closed within the FPGA. First two quadratic encoders are read to obtain the position using the state machines. Then the velocity is calculated by thinking the derivative. The control is applied and resulting in torque value, which is then transformed by the state of machines to generate the output PWM. Finally, the edge bridge is activated and enabled to the robot to move to the side position. The results. Uh, first, we presented the results simulation obtained using MATLAB. Mm, demonstrate functionally 
the, of the control applicable to the dynamic model. The gains are obtained through trial and error until the optimal values are we found. Sequentially and sinusal trajectory was used to the input signal to achieve the desired position. The position of the work table and the velocity for all three axes were plotted, yielding favorable results of the simulation. Um, then we make a prof instrumentation, and we have can see observed each of the components that make of the prof part A comprise a bit holder with capacity to accommodate bits with diameter ranges for 0.1 millimeters to 5 millimeters. Part B is a prof body. This part is a prof body. C is the shaft to responsible the, for the movement. The, the function of the spring is returned on the principal component and they touch a metal part to be more fast in, in this application. Uh, the complete mechanism was mounted on the set axis to perform the scanning function. In the figures, you can observe how the probe is positioned on the set axis, following the CNC operands as coordinate measurement machines. Experimental results. To ensure the scan precision, the previously mentioned control was implemented and the initial trajectory was applied to variable speed at the robot moves forward. Mm, experimental results. The design system was experimentally executed by initially following of sinusoidal trajectory to ask the robustness of the mechanisms. The results indicate that each of the graphs exhibit similar behavior to the simulated resultation and demonstrate the system is reality. Consequently, the next step in testing the robots involves contouring and scanning routine for a specific part. This will allow for comprehensive evaluation of the probe functionally and overall performance on the CNC machine as coordinate measuring device. Finally, a part was scanned specifically the shell of a turtle. As you can see, there are several markings of the shell, which are results of numerous tests conducted until the surface area of one centimeter by 0.5 centimeters. What we'll select this area? I select. The scanner software was successfully recovered and in comes observe how the scanner passed over marked lines from the prior test. This particular sample was chosen to highly the level of the detail achieved during the scanning process. Okay, conclusion, the dynamic model was critical to the development of the robot control firmware FPGA software and controller. Its precision enabled the robot perform motion with near interesting resolution. In addition, the probe system design played a critical role in facilitating the robot scanning process. By incorporating the phenomenon of friction into robot's motion, its performance was already results. Um, a robot was developed to effectively competent with computer numerical control, machines, and industrial levels, demonstrating high precision and efficient typical associated with CNC system. And it's all, and this is my reference, all my reference. Hey, thanks. <clears throat> Well, is there anyone uh, here or online who would like to ask a question for Mr. Francisco? Okay. Uh, well, uh, I have a question, Mr. Juan Francisco. Uh, yes. You uh, used uh, conventional DC motors in your robot, in, in this Cartesian uh, 3D robot, but you could have used uh, stepper motors instead. Why did you choose uh, these, these motors specifically? My motors are DC current, mm -hmm. but we have a technical to convert this DC motor to a transmission, direct transmission. And 
for that the response is practically linear. Uh, my motors are DC current. And yes. the stepper motors, uh, we don't probe this part, but I use this, these motors, DC current. Uh, do you think uh, it would be possible for your implementation to use stepper motors? Mm. I think it's better for have high precision. The, the industrial sector use DC motors, but I know stepper motors are, are better in small movements, but I don't know if I can use I can use the stepper motors, but in this work use DC motors. I don't know how, how these stepper motors have um, better precision. Uh, okay, uh, but in the industrial applications of the CNC machines. Uh, you said that they use uh, DC motors just like you, like you do. Yes, these motors are um, trans direct transmission. For that, the resolution are very high. But um, I continually study this part and including a friction model. Uh, for that. When I include the friction model, my motor responds like a um, industry sector, but I don't um, show these results. Oh, uh, right. okay. I yes, see. In my model, include after do this, include my model of friction, and then compense of effects, and have high resolution, like an uh, industry robot. Okay, so uh, it, it is possible to achieve higher resolution. Yes, uh, including the model friction. Uh, in, in the, the model. of course, in the in the state that uh, you work uh, currently mm -hmm. is uh, what is the what is the precision? You, you uh, approximately, yes, the precision of this robot actually are uh, 100 microns. The robots uh, of the industry have one micron. But including a uh, frictional model, I, I have five microns of, of error. By, but by, by, I, by I continue to work. <laughs> So by including the, the friction on your model, you are confident. You're confident that you will. Confidence now, but I publish the results in one year approximately. And this part, okay, awesome. this part of okay. this equation, I include the friction. Okay. And you also showed in your presentation uh, the the, the parts of the uh, of the proof that you are using uh, yes but you have the this is this is the diagram this is the scheme but you presented a physical a physical one uh, yes I, like golden yes i bought this proof mm -hmm. uh, and this proof uh, the did you build it? Did you uh, construct it? Or you yes. uh, so oh. so uh, you didn't buy it? I build this. I build this with um in the laboratory. I make my okay. material and build this. That's interesting. Uh, do you think that uh, the precision uh, could uh, could be uh, 
improved by using uh, commercial a commercial proof because uh, I know that uh, it seems that uh, it is a very very hard work you are doing here, but uh, the limitations of the manufacturer uh, sometimes uh, impact uh, directly in the quality of the of the measurement in this in this case. Uh, uh, do you consider to deploy uh, a commercial proof at some point? I proof a commercial proof in my robot, but are more expensive these these proofs. But the resolution is very high. Okay. Uh, I proof this, but are very expensive these these proofs. Commercial proofs are very expensive. For oh. that, I I build my my own proof. That's why you it's more cheap. Build. It's more okay. cheap. Okay, okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Francisco. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution and thank you uh, very much to all the audience. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here with you in this uh, second session of the of the topic of mechatronics in the CCE 2024. Thank you very much. See you.